Today, we live in such an exciting world. Today, we have going through the biggest change since the Industrial Revolution. The Internet of Things has arrived. We have three billion devices now connected to the Internet. Three billion devices. By 2020, it's estimated we'll have 18 billion of these devices. GPSs, Fitbits, medical devices, maybe even robots. But you know, there's one thing that could happen. One thing that could spoil this whole party. Scupper it all up. And that's security. When I was in college, I used to have some great parties. I didn't want them to end. Friends would come in. The music would be fantastic. And then the lights would come on. The police were at the door. The party was over. And security could end that Internet of Things party. Let me turn it around to people out in the audience here. How many people here have Fitbits? Put your hand in the air. Quite a few. Keep your hands in the air if you know where your personal data is going to each time you use it. Not too many hands left. When we go on holidays and we take loads of beautiful family videos, great souvenir videos, photographs, we come home. Hopefully we, we back them up, right? But again, do we know where those precious moments, photographs, videos are going? Yes, they're going into the cloud, but who's got access to them in the cloud? Where are they moving them to? How long are they up there for? All questions which I believe are unanswered today. You know, I've been studying cybercrime and following cybercrime for the last 30 years. And I've never seen as much activity and intensity when it comes to cybercrime as we're experiencing today. Just look what happened during the summer. The WannaCry virus. The WannaCry virus over one weekend impacted 250,000 organizations over one weekend. And it wasn't just organizations, it was people. People on trolleys waiting to get into operating theaters, waiting to have life surgery done, being turned around on trolleys because the surgeons can't access their medical records. One of my jobs is to follow and provide intelligence around cyber criminality. And at the moment, we're following very closely 180 cyber gangs that exist out there globally, 180. And they're in four categories. The first category is the organized criminal. These are the guys that operate on what's called the dark net. It's their eBay for selling and sharing your information and getting value for it. Currently helping an organization who've lost a seven-figure sum as a result of a ransomware attack, an email that came in and maliciously locked up a lot of files. It has caused them a lot of problems. The second group are the nation state attackers. These guys are becoming really prevalent, really prominent. They're well-funded by large governments, and they are disruptive, both to your lives, to elections, and our day-to-day -day activities. The third area, the third group, are the hacktivists. And when I was in college, these guys would walk up and down the college doors and gates outside the entrances, with placards, giving out about things. Now these guys are in front of computers, trying to d disrupt and change activities that they don't necessarily agree with. Last year, 
the east coast of the US was brought down for a full day as a result of one of these groups. This summer, a power station in Ukraine totally taken off the air by these groups. And the last group, and this is the group I worry about, these are the insiders. These are the people that have legitimate access to sensitive and confidential information. But for some reason, coming into collaboration with some of these groups and do things that are not in your best interest or mine. So you can see, we've got a perfect storm here. The Internet of Things is rapidly changing our lives and rapidly sharing information about us. And on the other side, we've got the cyber criminals getting more intense, more sophisticated, and more focused. So what can we do? How can we remain safe? Well, there's a few easy steps. It's not too difficult. Everybody here is well capable of following these techniques to keep us safe. When we left to go to TEDx today in Monte Carlo, when we left our homes, I'm sure we locked the doors. We activated the alarm. We didn't put a big sign up in front of the house to say, we're gone to TEDx Monte Carlo. I'm asking you, to protect and lock up your same personal data that's as valuable as the items in your house. Use good passwords on your PCs, on your phones, on your laptops. Change them on a regular basis. Update your security patches. When somebody comes to your door, knocks on it, doorbell rings, you don't automatically let them into your home until you authenticate and validate and recognize who they are, why they want to come in, have they been in before. When somebody wants to make friends with you on the internet, when somebody sends you an email and asks you to click on a link on the internet, ask yourself, do you recognize this person? Do you recognize this email address? You know, we've been talking here for the last 10 minutes. And within those 10 minutes, 40 people in the world have been impacted as a, res as a result of cybercrime. Let's avoid being in that group. Let's practice some of these techniques we just talked about. And let's continue to party with the Internet of Things. Thank you.